Testing one, two, testing Hi guys. one. Hi, guys. So we are down in Cemeteries near the coast. We just finished videotaping our cousin's rentals, these beautiful villas. And uh, we decided to stay in this location because it's so beautiful to do the second part of our Q&A. Our first part of the Q&A, which most of you have seen, ran to about 60 minutes. So we thought, well, we don't want to bore you guys and uh, thought we'd break it up a bit. So here we are to do our second Q&A. Yeah, I mean, we didn't realize there was that much, but there was. I mean, it's six months of... I took some notes, people were asking, they were wondering, you know, those kinds of things, you know, emails that I was receiving. Like we figured that doing a Q&A is the best way, and it's for you guys, right? I just it's want to get out as much information to you as possible. So as, yeah. as I had mentioned, we were filming here at our cousin's uh, villas, so we will be releasing that uh, video shortly, just to give you an extensive view of uh, the accommodations here. It's, it is really a beautiful location. So the first topic and the first question was, what are the type of accommodations here on Pico? Yeah, um, first of all, there are not too many hotels. It's not that kind of destination. The island of San Miguel and Tercera, uh, they have more hotels, those kinds of things. Here it's more rural, it's more like villas, it's more rustic homes. It's, it's, um, there are new builds, but uh, yeah. most of them are not huge pl things that they're building. So. Uh, variety is definitely here. Uh, it will suit pretty much everybody. I, yeah. just, I don't see. So uh, you can you can rent a, a rustic cottage. You can uh, go a little bit more luxury, uh, high end. You can rent a, a house or a villa, just like what we would be showing you um, at the houses here that our cousins own. Uh, different locations um, on the island. So some people will stay in one spot for a week and then they'll move to another spot of the island for the next week. It really depends on the time that you're here. Yes. So like for this example here with my uh, the, these fellows here in San Mateos, um, they have similar ones throughout the island. So you would choose the area to be in if you wanted a peaceful kind of uh, area, but not in uh, one of the main towns. This would be perfect. For example, I mean, you're connected. You're basically in the middle of two of the main towns, Madalena and Laish, 15 minutes to each one from here. I would say 80 percent have cars when they come here because they're also going around the island, going to the highlands. So they already have a car, easy to get around. So you don't have to be in in the town. Now, if you don't have a car. There's other ways to move around. To to move around. There's yeah, local there's trans taxis. Taxis, local transportation. There's a bus that goes around the island. Yeah, you could arrange with uh, even my cousin. I mean, you could arrange. There's options, okay. Um, but like I said, there's variety. If you want to be right next to the town, not a problem. Right in the village, not a problem. And the beauty of Pico right now is there is a lot to choose from. And yeah. that's great. And especially know. this spot down here, it's so quiet. All you hear are the birds. You hear the sound of the ocean. the ocean. Beautiful breeze going through right now. It's just a great spot. Yeah, it looks like all the islands have uh, have areas, you know, uh, where... They all have their uniqueness yeah, to it. They do. So, um, but the ocean is always close by and so is the country. It's hard to be somewhere where you don't have that view. Okay. Yeah, and one of the things that uh, you won't get here is all-inclusives or yes. mass tourism. Yeah. Sorry, guys, we had a little bit of technical difficulties with our audio. There's a little bit of static, which you, you could probably hear. So hoping that going forward, we don't have that problem. Yeah, we'll have to keep checking. It's more with the audio. And you know what they say, right? It happens to the best of us, right? <laughs> yeah, so now um, we are going to continue with the future of tourism. And I had mentioned that um, Pico and most most of the Azores, they don't have all-inclusives here. That we know of, and uh, I'm not saying it's never going to happen, but really it's not that kind of destination. Most of the islands is not mass tourism. Um, I wouldn't even call San Miguel mass tourism. Uh, they get quite a they get more tourism there because it's a bigger island, but 
I think they're still far from what we, we will label it as mass tourism. And the reason for that is there's no white sand beaches all over the place. Uh, mostly it's those lava pools, you know, those healthy lava pools. Although in Fayol, they have a nice sand beach. They do. They, yeah. No, you can't. <laughs> so if you are looking for a sand beach, you can go to Fayol. That's quite nice. Yeah, they have. So then Santa Maria has it. San Miguel has yes. black sand. And so does Fayal. But it's not in the mass. It's like it's not like you go to Cuba and those other places. There's just beaches like that everywhere. Plus, they have the 35 degree plus steady temperatures all, almost all year round uh, in most of the Caribbean, for example, or Mexico. Yeah. And that uh, here is not like that. Uh, Thank God. Yeah. So it's, it's actually, it's, it can get still pretty hot. The sun can get pretty intense. But then you have this nice breeze coming through. Um, I know in Canada right now they're having a heat wave at 40 degrees. Yeah. I don't know how you guys are dealing with that. Well, we we use well, we know. How. I mean, we do. <laughs> we, we do know how because we have dealt with it before. Air condition. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so again, th th not having the, the the two things there, it protects places like the Azores from becoming mass tourism because most of those people will not. They, they'd rather go to the you know the Canary Islands or Mine Riviera. So here it's it's nature, it's tranquility, it's peace, it's safety, and I do get a lot of people commenting and asking more, just to, us to give more information on what it's like to be here, you know, all year round, not just in the summer, but in the winter. Like the temperature today is about 25, and the waters, I think I, uh, it's about 21, and it can get up to about 28, and then you know, there we go. That's a that's considered a high for here already, right? So. Uh, yeah. So uh, speaking of being here all year round, uh, that kind of brings us to the next. Uh, question about business opportunities so there's a lot of people that are thinking of opening their businesses here uh, there was one gentleman that we spoke to he wants to open up a tech company yeah for a company to come here your Azores is in, is in between North America and Europe so it's, it's well positioned um, the companies here the government is, is realizing that and I think they're putting things in place infrastructure to be able to accommodate anyone that wants to come in as an individual, work remotely, or a company. And I think uh, this uh, gentleman that is on, that is research, and he was looking at the Azores, um, and he did uh, find our video, and we kind of chatted, and then I kind of pointed him to anyone that, someone that could help him a little bit more in that area. So there's people coming in to investigate, to analyze, spend some time, make sure it's the right place, and I think that's what we, we advise that. Uh, opening up a business or moving here, that's what you should be doing. Uh, but what, the Azores is primed for that and uh, I think um, it's an area where a lot I think a lot of people a lot of companies are looking yeah so that brings us to the next one the agriculture uh, as far as agriculture and in, in my experience um, we decided that we're doing uh, no dig here and uh, no dig for those of you who don't know it's um, you're actually just putting cardboard down and you're putting compost on top of it and whatever you plant grows into the soil. So you're not disturbing the soil or the nutrients, the uh, microorganisms. So that's, that actually makes it a lot easier because there's a, a lot of weeds here, <laughs> lots and lots of weeds. So it'll be t take it quite a long time to dig out the weeds and they'll grow back very quickly. So, um, so, so far my zucchini and my squash are and growing sunflowers. and sunflowers are growing like yeah. crazy. Giant. Yeah. It's amazing. Every two, three days it just blows up. Yeah. And I, I think the, 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 the no dig, don't forget the root still goes into the, the, the soil, which is very fertile here. You can basically grow anything yeah. here in the Azores. I, I've come to that conclusion from what I've seen. And we are in zone 11, which means that you can pretty much grow a lot. Yeah. And um, and as far as the no dig, it's not it's not unusual here. It's not something really that new. Uh, we even had the gentleman that brings his cows over to mow our lawn. Uh, he even suggests using cardboard to keep the weeds down around some of the plants, yeah. like the grapevine that we and they planted. use plastic too. They use yeah, they use uh, like tarp, tarp as well. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, but f uh, what I've noticed here too, uh, so far this, they still have seasons here, but not like in Canada. Uh, they don't get frost, and so right now they're growing a lot of corn and potatoes, potatoes. Uh, yams. Rob, uh, the, the vines, the vineyards the, are the really vineyards full. Are, yeah, Figs, the, fig trees are coming because the harvest will be later, but it's full. It's just coming on very strongly. Uh, all the uh, the produce, basically, you can see. You know, it's going to be a if nothing happens with the weather, it's going to be great. You know, a yeah. lot, of, lot of good harvest here. Yeah, um, and in, in uh, January, you get the 
really sweet lots of oranges, oranges. yeah there's yeah. yeah yeah a lot of product you can go pretty much everything someone was asking me the other day if you if you there's blueberries and i haven't seen it you know there's some blueberries would be probably a good thing to grow i'm pretty sure he can grow here we uh, have a lot of blackberries yeah, so, and we have, I, I heard some guy in, uh, I mean, people have coffee, like they just grow a little bit. It's definitely, you can grow coffee here. And there's a gentleman who's, I think, starting a plantation to grow coffee, to actually produce coffee. But um, yeah. if there isn't anything that can be grown here, and some of you know it, just yeah, please let put us it know. in the comment. I'd like I to know. I'd be curious. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know that. Uh, and very interesting about that. Uh, the next topic is real estate. And uh, throughout the, the, the whole time we've been doing these vlogs, we always get... Uh, some uh, real estate questions. We did a real estate uh, video on just real estate. Uh, you can go into our channel and uh, look that up. We just went to um, uh, Fayal. Right? We're starting to see more properties getting, even us getting used to seeing uh, the different types, more types. Uh, we actually were invited to go there by friends of ours that are here looking for properties. So they yes. went, we, we, we went to Fayal, went to Fayal property. The island that's just adjacent to us here from yeah. Pico. So we looked at some properties there, and I think the range uh, end here. And, and uh, the range has been around uh, in Fayal was between 110 and 138, 35. Uh, they all needed some work, okay? And here uh, we saw one that was smaller. Uh, yeah, it was around uh, 31,000. Um, and uh, it was a very cute house. It, Definitely needed work. It had a nice yes. piece of land with it. Yes. Um, ocean view. The ocean view. For the and, most part. And the, the only part of it, it was that it had a house in front of it, but you could see the ocean from both sides. Yeah, and a good piece of land as well. So that, just to give you an example that we're still finding uh, properties even under 50, okay? And you're just going to need work. You'd have to go in there like the area and look at the job there and get an idea how much it would cost and... And uh, I'm sure someone will eat that up. I mean, it's in a good area. And um, uh, I actually like the property. I like the land around it. They had banana trees. And the house in front actually added a little bit of protection in case you get the wind coming up <laughs> from yeah. the coast. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so just it's a let, wide range. Yeah, there is a wide range. And it really depends on, you know, what you're looking for. If you're looking for something that um, you want low maintenance, you know, you I wouldn't suggest getting something with a lot of land unless you're going to yes. hire someone to take care of it. Yeah. Um, but, or you can get land if you want to get your hands dirty and start growing your own uh, uh, vegetables and fruit trees. It's, it's great. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows what they're looking for and what they can afford, right? So this, these friends of ours, they're looking to find something under 150. So that's the target that we're we're hitting. Uh, we obviously see things 300, 250. Obviously, they're huge. Some of these are really big. There's some of these are new. Uh, so it depends what area you're in. Uh, some people uh, want to be closer to the ocean. Some want to be higher up. I mean, it just depends. You're gonna find different price ranges. Uh, the, overall, the market is is going. It is going higher. It'll probably continue to go. But you, I think you'll for the next while you'll be able to find uh, affordability if you're a little flexible. Uh, yeah. That's just our opinion, it's what we're seeing. And uh, we'll continue to show you um, more as we as we see them as well. So the way the real estate uh, market works here, the way the agents work here, um, the agents will only show you what they're listing. It's not like North America where you get one agent and they show you every house um, here it's only the ones that are listed by the agent. Uh, you can go and search those houses, but you would have to contact that agent to go see the house. Uh, or you find houses that are for sale by owner. Private. Uh, which is what we stumbled upon when we yeah. were hiking one day. <laughs> yeah, and I see them. Um, yeah, because at the end of the day, you know, you want to see, you know, all the houses that might be suitable for you. Um, so the agent here, the you know, good agent will try and reach out to the other agent that maybe has the listing and, and get them to show you. They'll even show it for them, right? It's just a matter of them saying okay. So, But that's changing. I think in the future you're going to get more neutrality where someone will be able to show you and then contact whoever's listing it and try to, to work out a deal for the 
for their client. Yeah, because I think it's more of a win-win. It's a win-win. When they do it that way. Yeah, this way you always overpay, right? It also drives the market up, right? Because you you might see they might only have four houses. They'll show you four houses. The fifth one might be the one, but they didn't show it to you, right? So you need to do your research. You're, you you got to analyze it from afar. And then when you're here, just take your time. I, I can't stress that enough. Just take your time. And um, yeah, so when you, you know, do find a house that you like, then you want to obviously get it inspected. Now, if you get a mortgage here, the bank does the inspection. They hire an independent company, and they do that for you. Yeah, and in our case, we do have. Um, we've been lucky enough to find an amazing notary. Uh, his name is Evo. Uh, we have a great uh, manager at a bank that helped, that dealt with us. And um, there's a lawyer that we got that uh, our friends are actually using. And he was referred to them by evil, the notary. Yeah, and they're quite happy with it. Yeah, them. so it's a matter of having the team, you know, a team of people that you can trust, people that can that can answer all your questions, and people that love their jobs. And I think all these individuals that we just mentioned love their jobs, and they're uh, they're they got a lot of information, you know. Yeah, and now now before you can even buy a house, uh, you have to get a NIF number. So that can be done uh, with the uh, the lawyer. That's what our friends did. Yes. Uh, they went through the lawyer in a very, very simple process. Yeah. Used to be a lot of red tape here in Portugal, but that they cut that back. Uh, they still need to cut back more bureaucracy, but that's a work in progress. Yeah. From, all, from the discussions we, we, I have with people. We had that discussion in the first <laughs> the first half of the, the Q&A. Yeah. yeah. No, but just to touch on, with the, again, uh, we had the meeting with Evo, the notary, yesterday, because we are uh, we should have mentioned this when we were talking about the business opportunities, and, and we're uh, finally going to uh, you know start our business, incorporate the, the business on this side of the pond in Portugal. And we just sat there with him for about an hour. He answered all their questions, and uh, you volunteered a lot of information because sometimes that's what you want. You might not have the question, right? Because you don't think to ask it. You still need that answer that, you know, and they look out for you. So you don't feel alone. And just because we spend a lot of time here doesn't mean we know everything, okay? And, th and things are always changing. Governments are always changing. New, new legislation, rules, conditions, all this stuff. And you do need a team behind you. We also get a lot of uh, questions and comments uh, about weather, okay? Um, when is the seasons? Um, you know, the humidity in the winter. So here, just to break it down, we believe there's like three seasons, right? You have basically... Three seasons in a day. It could be three seasons in a day too, but in the whole year, there's three seasons. Um, so you have your basically summer, like what they're calling the tourist season. It could be anywhere from June, let's say, even to September. You have the shoulder season, which would be like April, May, October, November, even a little December. The weather is pretty good still. Then January, February, March are the three months that we find are the coldest, the most humidity, uh, you get wind, you get all these things. So those are pretty much the seasons, right? So, um, but all year round, it's you, the things are growing, you flowers, I mean, it's nonstop. You do see a little bit of snow on top of Pico. Sometimes you'll see it comes on the way down. Uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, and it's funny because the locals get really excited. <laughs> <laughs> when there's snow on the mountain oh, yeah. and they'll say to us oh you guys do you want to come up and see the snows like we're from canada <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah we've experienced a lot of snow there yeah <laughs> um yeah i mean because in the winter uh usually the average temperatures between 12 and 16 let's say right that's in the winter uh when it gets below uh when i say that's plus we're talking about plus right if it gets to plus six rare uh, happened a few times. That only happened once when we came. Yeah, to so t when it gets down to ten plus ten, there's already you know, people are. It's not the usual. Okay. Yeah. And we did prepare for the winter when we were here. Yes. We got a radiator. Radiator. <laughs> because especially in the older homes, it gets very damp inside. Yes. That was pulling water like crazy. Oh it? yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were dumping that thing <laughs> like yeah. twice a day. And we had a heater. Uh, yeah. We used it, uh, and so we, and we were quite comfortable. Co quite comfortable, and uh, sure. I mean, I, I, we're also in a huge house, an old house. So the older the house, the more problems with humidity you're gonna get. These are big, you know, yeah, rocks because they're not insulated. Yeah, they're not insulated. Some have been, you know, if you renovate it, there's all the materials now that you can insulate it quite nicely. You could obviously get air, air condition and. And yeah. heater systems that are not too expensive to put in there. There's ways to, to deal with it. And that's what we're doing in the house that we bought. Uh, we took the ceiling down, so we're going to insulate uh, the roof. 
Yes. And uh, we're going to put an air conditioner and heater uh, system in the yeah. house. Even if you don't use them, I mean, because a lot of times you don't need to use them because uh, you get some breezes coming in and it, you know, it's hot outside, you come inside it, you can feel the coolness right off the bat. Well, the next question was, why doesn't Carlos speak more Portuguese? That's, that was, uh, yeah, I remember that question. Um, was it, a Portuguese, was it all in Portuguese? And uh, no, basically I had to tell him that um, even though I speak Portuguese, I write, I read, I'm not excellent at it. You know, uh, people understand me and uh, I need to get better and uh, I'm aware of that. And uh, There I'll has continue. been a few occasions where you've said the wrong word. <laughs> yeah, people do, uh, they're laughing a little because yeah, I'm making, uh, they start laughing because I'll, the, the word's completely wrong for what I'm trying to say. And there's other... I think one of them was a swear word. Yeah, sometimes it's close to other... But anyway, it becomes a fun thing. But, um, and also, as far as the language, I mean, I'm going to... It's just not as strong as it used to be. And I want it to get stronger. I don't want to definitely lose Portuguese because it's... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that my, my parents, uh, you know, made me go to Portuguese school uh, in Canada over the when I was younger. Uh, the other reason is this channel is for English, right? It's for the Canadian uh, traveler. It's for uh, and beyond. Okay, US so US US and, and people and most people speak English. So yeah. and we were trying to promote Pico ourselves uh, to people that are not from here, obviously, so they can come here, right? Yeah. So it has to be in English, and uh, and on YouTube there is you can put closed caption in your own language. Yes, you can. That's correct. Um, yeah, so that's this is pretty much why I mean it's, it's an English channel at the end of the day. I will try and uh, if I comes to my mind to um, say some things in Portuguese, you know, vou tentar falar mais português nos vídeos do futuro. Hopefully that sounded okay. Uh, well, even, I, even I'm trying to learn. Yeah, Portuguese. she's trying to do Portuguese, learn you Portuguese. You just interrupted me. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I, oh yeah, you got your little sign there. We'll, we'll explain that after. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, there's a couple of people that, you know, they they are quite shocked when I come in and say, oh, bon dia, to do me. No, you're getting better, yeah. I mean, what happens is, everyone, everyone speaks English here. You have the immigrants that come back, they, it's, it's English, right? Most Portuguese that are watching, they speak English, so they, they know, they understand it, and, I, and that's great. Um, and then when I'm here, my cousins speak English. Uh, when I'm in Canada, it's English, you know, and uh, that's where you start losing uh, some of your your language, yep. your original language. But uh, I'm aware of it. I don't want to get better at uh, speaking Portuguese, proper Portuguese, so I can understand, uh, you know, a lot, a lot more. So it's probably not a good idea. He's teaching me Portuguese. <laughs> No, yeah, you might we, teach me the wrong words. Yeah, and I forget the teacher. I mean, we just start talking English and we forget. Yeah, I know. We right? Had, yeah. So this uh, really, uh, really nice follower. Basically, word uh, the con. Did, she was trying. I could tell she was trying not to um, hurt uh, your feelings. It hurt my feelings. Basically, she was very constructive, and uh, I took it that way. I thought it was it's wonderful that you're that you you know you you're um, you can say what you said and. Um, Looking and, out for me. Yeah, she was looking out for Laura. <laughs> and it was basically to do where, uh, you know, sometimes I interrupt her and I just wanted to explain the, why that happens. I mean, a lot of times uh, it's because you, you got to understand who I am. I, I get all this excitement built up inside me and it's like go, 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 talk. Get the, and especially if the subject is a subject that I'm more aware of than she is, sometimes I'll, I'm just cutting her off. And I know that's not, not correct and you shouldn't be doing it. And I, I only know I'm doing it until I play back everything and we're watching it, right? And it was nice of her. Uh, the, the follower to to basically um, call you out call me out <laughs> and uh, that's great yeah, he doesn't mean to do it <laughs> and and because of that um, so what I've been doing I don't know if you've noticed but on this one on this video uh, which is the, the last Q&A um, you might have noticed some form of improvement and it's because I did this uh, I don't know if you can see it I'll read it to you hopefully you can see it Basic well, you, you guys let us know if it's been improved. Yes, you let me know. Let us know. So it basically says, Carlos, do not interrupt Laura. Uh, breathe and control your excitement and basically your passion. Just take it easy and... Uh, don't forget he's Portuguese. Yeah. Portuguese have a lot of passion. Yeah. I've always been that way. People don't know me. They're not like, oh, that's that's him. That's Carlos. And I, I get all... It's like a high-strung kind of uh, drama kind of just go and... Uh, you are my ambassador, Kwan, man. 
Congratulations. <laughs> Well, it's nice that you acknowledge it. Yeah, I'll make the, yeah, exactly. I do, and I'll uh, definitely going to keep working at it. And uh, and I think that's it. That's yeah. all I want to say. Thank you for uh, bringing us to that. Uh, <laughs> Bring it, bringing it to your attention. To my attention, which uh, yeah, I'm, it's funny. When I, it, I have tried. <laughs> yeah, she has. And when I saw your comment just before that, I, I was saying, "Oh my God!" You know, I think I even told we were watching it. I said, "I think I was interrupting you too much." And then the comment comes in shortly after, and I thought it was great. So, uh, anyways, anyways, yeah. We really thank you guys for watching this video and uh, joining us and supporting us. Uh, yeah, we that's hope it. You, hope yeah. We hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, and so what you need to do is hit the like button. Like button. <laughs> Comments and definitely email us. Uh, feel free. If we can't help you, we have a really good team that uh, I can refer you to. Okay? Yes. So take right. care. Take care, guys. Uh, hasta luego. Adios. Adios. Até a, pro Até a próxima. Yeah.